Chapter 5, A Permit to Keep a Witch The story about Ichabody and the herring went all around town, and as stories do, it grew and grew. Some people swore that after Felina had left the grocery store, all the labels on the cans were turned upside down. Someone else said that all the pumpkins popped their seeds when Felina stared at them. It's bad luck to have a witch about, everybody said. Mr. Doon heard all about it at, down at the newspaper office. When he came home that evening, Lucinda was sitting in one corner of the living room. She had a tall dunce hat perched on her head. Felina was sitting in the, another corner with her peaked black hat. Mr. Doon looked down at them, and he began to laugh. He laughed, and he laughed, and he laughed, until the tears ran down his cheeks. "'I hear you went shopping today, Mary,' he said to Mrs. Doon. And Mrs. Doon said, "'It wasn't funny.' Then Mr. Doon looked down at the floor, and there was Ichabody in his little peaked hat, lying on the gray rug, purring away. Mr. Doon began to laugh all over again. Then he kissed Lucinda on the cheek, he chucked Felite under the chin, and he kissed his wife's pretty cross face. Life must have been very dull, he said, before this little witch came to live with us. The strange thing is, when he said that, everyone began to laugh, even Mrs. Doon. They laughed and laughed and laughed. Even the manager of the supermarket laughed a little to himself when he told his wife about what happened in the store that day. The kindly Doon family found it slightly embarrassing now and then to have a witch in their midst. There was the matter of the hat to begin with. Felina insisted upon wearing it constantly, except when she had her hair shampooed, of course. She wore it to bed, she wore it at the table, she even wore it to church on Sunday, and the dunes allowed her to because they realized how important it was to her. I keep my magic in it, Felina always said, and strange things did seem to happen when Felina was around. There was the day, for instance, when Mrs. Brown from next door arrived to say that all her chrysanthemums had lost their heads. "'Every last one of them. Beheaded. Like that,' she snapped her fingers. "'And I thought I saw that little house guest of yours behind the gate,' she added. "'Are you quite sure Clarence didn't do it?' asked Mr. Doon. "'Now it is well known that Mrs. Brown did not like children very much, "'and it was little wonder because she had one of her own named Clarence. "'Clarence was what is sometimes known as a problem child.' "'Clarence has been home with a cold all day,' said Miss Brown. "'I want a complete investigation.' "'You'll get it,' said Mr. Doon politely, and he politely closed the door. "'He asked Lucinda if she knew anything about the chrysanthemums. "'He asked Felina. She said, "'What are chrysanthemums?' "'He looked under the bed and behind the clothes in the closet and in the mulberry tree. "'No chrysanthemums. "'It wasn't until weeks later, when he filled his pipe from his humidor and took a big puff, "'that he began to suspect what might have happened to the flowers from Mrs. Brown's garden. "'Ugh!' he said, but it was too late to explain to Mrs. Brown, because at the time she was planting new bulbs. Then there was the time when Mrs. Doon went to make an apple pie. All of the apples had vanished from the refrigerator. Mr. Doon knew nothing about them. Lucinda knew nothing about them. Felina just set her small pointed chin and shook her head. But that very day, when Mrs. Doon took off the witch's hat to shampoo the little creature's hair, seventeen apple cores fell on the bathroom floor. Felina looked down at them, her eyes green and wide, as though she had never seen them before. And Mrs. Doon said nothing at all. She just began very gently to unbraid the black hair. That evening after supper, Mrs. Doon brought a big basket into the dining room and set it on the sideboard. Then she called all the family to come see it. It was full of delicious red apples, big oranges, bananas, and tangerines. She said, all the food in this house belongs to all the people in it. Whenever you want an apple or an orange, just help yourself. When the fruit vanished, the basket was always filled again. That was Mrs. Doon's kind of magic. When the days passed and nobody came to claim the little witch, Mr. Doon decided it was time to do something legal about the matter. So the whole family got into the blue sports car and went down to the courthouse to get a permit to keep a witch. "'A witch, eh?' said the old judge. "'He looked down at the thin little creature. "'Looks more like a scarecrow to me. "'Now, he didn't know witches have such good ears, "'or he wouldn't have spoken so loud. "'Felina said defiantly, "'Witches are supposed to be scary, "'and I'm a mean witch, so there.' "'Ahem,' said the judge. "'He put on his bifocal glasses "'and peered down at his papers. "'You, George Doon, want a permit to keep a witch for how long? "'About a year, till next Halloween, that is.' 
and he explained how Felina had broken her broom and would have to stay on the ground till next Halloween, and she had no other place to live. Well, of course, he could put her in an institution, said the judge, if you don't want the trouble, that is. Oh, but we do want her, said Mrs. Doon. Please, sir, said Lucinda, let her live at our house. Very well, then, the judge scribbled on the form in front of him. Granted, temporary permit to keep one small witch till next Halloween. That'll be one dollar. "'Thank you, Your Honor,' said Mr. Doon. "'He started to leave with his family. "'Just a minute,' said the judge, pointing a finger at the little witch. "'She'll have to go to school, you know. "'Even a witch needs an education.'"